Stop talking. I'm trying to explain something to you. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 18, I think. All right. Scary. Huh? That was scary. Not for me. <laughs> so, guys, we always try to have a little fun and open up with some shtick. So, just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> We did not rehearse this. We actually had a debate before. By the way, this was not my idea. It was Enrique's idea and Mike's idea. But I wanted a fake slap, not a real He slap. wanted me to do this. And as you guys know from 17 episodes of the monthly edition and 99 episodes of the antivirus edition, we are real, we are live. Sometimes stuff happens. So I told him, I said, just go real because I want to have a real reaction. I want to feel what I'm going to do as soon as that happens. And if you accidentally knock me out, dislocate my jaw, it's going to be probably a, something that you haven't seen quite often on YouTube or anywhere else. Either way, it's going to make for an interesting episode. Fortunately, it worked out all right. All right? For me, not for him. So, guys, welcome to episode 18. We got a full program. Start asking questions. What we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna start with um, Greg Maria's question. Uh, he's, he's one of the antivirus tribe, long-term viewer. Um, his question is, when you do a hip heist and your opponent kind of lifts up their hips, which kind of neutralizes the hip heist. And it, it's, it's very simple. So when I do a hip heist and the guy's sitting down. Guys, by the way, a hip heist is, is a very uh, favorite uh, technique of mine, okay? So I like this because if, if he doesn't raise his hips, even slow motion, you could see that very, very effective. But a good way to neutralize this is to just, as I'm doing this, is to lift up his hips. This basically blocks the hip heist, all right? So if that happens, guys, this was not for uh, to be wasted. When I'm going down, guys, I'm going to adjust my positioning and now I'm starting to get different grips there's a variety of different things you could do so if you have a guy that's kind of stalling playing a very conservative game in your guard and just kind of uh, tries to neutralize any grips you might have just basically as soon as that happens you know um, make sure that that you re-grip it's, it's either you can get an origatame the bolt cutter grip sometimes you can wrap the head uh, sometimes you can shift out your hips. So there's different things you can do depending on what what uh, kind of game you like, number one. And number two is how does he react. But let's go over a couple of different scenarios here. So again, my hip heist, I get neutralized. And that, this is it. I start hunting immediately. So this time I was able to kind of get my hips pretty far out. I have making sort of an omoplata and Rika defense gives me his back. Okay? Another possibility is I wrap his head, and now I don't have a good guillotine right now because my other hand, my right hand, did not have time to get in. But I have a good chin strap grip. So as Enrique tries to pop it out, which he will almost always will, I'm going to bring the outside leg over. And now we have, we have something happen. Um, this is, hip heist is highly underutilized. In, you know, even guys that are good, good guard players. Um, again, I, I use it frequently uh, against guys of sort of lower belts, but also high level belts. To oh, if they're playing like this, it opens things up. They have to when they raise their hips. Right now, their whole body. So as they're doing this, their whole body is is, is focused on stopping the hip heist. But right now, they will come down. And initially, when they come down, they're usually posting their hands. So you have a chance to move your hips out to the side, either left or right, and attack. Again, get a good grip. Wrap the head. Uregatame, Oloplata. There's a lot of different things you can do with it. Do we have any follow-up questions on that? 
right now, no questions on this specific technique, but we have a question from Thaddeus. On uh, Enrique's slapping technique? <laughs> He's asking, how do you deal with a strong knee shield and guard or half guard, especially when they have a cross collar grip? Thank you. So, you know, sometimes you need to deal with the grips. So, you, you know, to, you, you try to strip, uh, to strip the grip. But sometimes um, this grip is not, right now, is not necessarily dangerous until the second hand starts to come in. So I got to focus, make sure that the second hand doesn't come in. You know, the second hand, once the second hand comes in, he can jab my head under, he can try to go for cross collar choke. So I'm not necessarily worried about the, the collar grip. I'm more worried about the second hand. Okay, so uh, there's two schools schools of thought, and you can mix them up, mix them up a little bit. When somebody has a strong grip, you can either try to strip it, but you know a lot of times you got a guy that's got a strong grip. You focus on that, you open up other things. The other possibility is ignore the grip as long as it's not dangerous at that time. All right, so. What I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna to continue to pass. So anyway, anytime somebody has a niche, strong knee shield, what I'll try to do is see if I can, can you move around so they can see. So there's a couple of things I could do. I'm gonna to try to collapse it, all right? So you can either get it passed, and you can start like this, and when he adjusts, you try to collapse it with your hips. Now, I can pass to either side, and I don't worry about it. Now he has to regrip. Okay. Um, another possibility, if he's got to, if I can't collapse it. So again, I'm most worried about his left hand. That's the hand that I'm going to worry about. So if if he has a strong knee shield and I can't collapse it, what I might try to do is shuffle over and try to switch direction. In which case, now again, that grip becomes unimportant okay when you are training jiu-jitsu or, or, or sparring sometimes people get like a horse blinders on they kind of just look at one thing and they're not not paying attention to some of the other factors that may actually be more important to passing to attacking to defending um, I'm a big fan a lot of times uh, like I said I'm not I'm not a weakling but I'm not the strongest guy and there's some guys that will literally hang by their fingers, you know, to try to train their grips. You know, if a guy like that grips your jacket, you know, um, the collar, a very slim chance you're going to strip it. So might as well just not ignore it, but kind of go in the best possible direction, which makes that grip useless. I do that even standing up. So, um, so the, if, 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 you know, I will try to get under. If I can, just pull now that grip is useless. Yeah, it could actually be used against him. All right? So again, uh, standing up, if, if, you know, if I can't strip the grip, now, now it's effectively stripped. So first thing I do if somebody has a strong grip standing up, I'm going to try to swing my shoulder. You know, now if that grip is kind of useless. Um, if I can, if it's like really not, nothing has happened, yeah. Now, that grip of his can actually be used against him, okay? Um, if I'm passing guard and he, he gets, again, strong grip. Yeah, how's that grip working out for you now? Guys, I know I took Enrique's back, just FYI. It's ideal for me to have the triangle lock up on this side, but sometimes you don't get that possibility. Like in this instance, locking up on the other side is perfectly acceptable. As you well know from watching a lot of the videos we put out, triangle is a very strong form of control. We don't necessarily look for, sometimes you look for it more as a form of control. It will have a choking power, but it may not be necessarily an ideal triangle, but in that case, that form of control becomes more important than the form as a submission. And going back to the hip heist, 
Uh, 10 U.S. Uh, rushes asking, Professor, can Enrique go for the guillotine choke when you hip heist? Uh, it's very difficult for him. Huh? Yeah. Because he needs, he needs this hand. He doesn't have the body position in. <laughs> I will. You should have stretched better. I did stretch. So, the answer is no. It's it's a very good technique, guys. I strongly expect, and, and it's a very fundamental technique. It's something that you're taught from uh, you know, a lot of times in white and blue belt, but it works at a, gate, at a very high level. I have hip heisted black belts on their back, but it's rare, but again, if it, it, it opens people up. So this is what, when the guy sort of, I'm trying to, just we're playing, this is, this is what it looks like, that ideally. But even if it fails, it, there is a lot of other follow-up things you could do Regrip a more favorable grip and engage the guy now in your guard. Break them once once they do this, it's it's hard to break somebody's posture when they're doing this. Whether or not they squash, if they don't squash you and they come back, they kind of come in back like this. If this happens, it still gives you an opportunity to gain some good grips. Uh, if they do, if they raise their hips, by nature their posture when they come down, their posture will be broken. So all you need to do is adjust your grips and hip your moves out, uh, move, move your hips to one side or the other, and it's going to work out really well for you. And lots of peers asking, since this is a move that can be seen from a distance, do you have any ways to set it up, the hip heist? Uh, what do you mean can be seen from a distance? Meaning like, it's, it's sort of like people see you, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, so, guys, we talked about the guard opening, right? To buy so yourself a split second. We don't do this. All right? We've talked about the guard opening. You raise your butt, open your legs, and your knees are kind of squeezed together where he, for a split second longer, feels like the guard is still closed. What I'm gonna do is, as I'm twisting my hips, I'm propping myself on my elbow and my hand. So he sees already hap this happening, right? Normally what they're gonna try to do is start to, but look, I look at my hand. If I look at him, this is gonna be very, this is gonna be, he's actually might step over. But if I look at my hand, you have a lot of torque. So even though he can see it coming, it's very, it's not that easy to, uh, to stop. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's not easy to stop. And any time you have something that's not easy to stop, if he does, he will expose something else. So let's look, look at it again. I'm gonna do it one, one time again a little fast and a little slow. This is fast. Slow. Look over your shoulder, don't look at him. I, I, you know, when I teach this in school, in my, in my academy, and I teach this fairly frequently. You're gonna hear me screaming constantly, look at your hand! Because people are always looking. You can literally do this test. Just posture up and don't try to squash me. I, I can't even do it, I, I kind of did half ass in between. But if you're looking at him, this will be squashed immediately. Look at your hand. You can see just me turning my head without doing anything else, started to off balance him. So the key to this is to look at that, that hand, the hand that you're posting on. Very, very important to me, fundamental technique, but it works very, very well even at the high levels to just get, get things going against a conservative opponent. Adolfo Fronda actually put in quotes in all caps, Fox yells, Look at your hand. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. 
And a lot followed up with, what do you do if he moves his leg back? Yes, <laughs> yes, I think I have this. I'll take this. So again, when, he st when somebody's like this, and they start to move their leg back, what's happening to the rest of their body? Yeah, their top is coming down to squash the hip heist. But what does that mean? in relation to you. They're breaking their posture. What do we need to attack from the guard? Attacks. <laughs> <laughs> what do we need to attack from the guard? What do we need to make our opponent do? Break their postures, number one. Number one. Misalignment is good, but break their posture. The most important thing. So watch, as he's moving his leg back to step over, which is, which is a counter, but it's a counter to get against badly executed hip heights. So as, look what's, I'm just recognizing the fact. I may not get this, and we can start, you know, put my foot on the hips. Now I regard it. So again, you have to recognize how they're countering the hip heist. If they start to move their leg back, come back down, bring the leg over, get it with a tommy grip. But usually, again, when you start to feel like that they're countering, whether it's by raising their hips or start to bring one of the legs back so they can step over, just come back down, attack. So anytime they're, you know, if they're here, it's hard to attack the arms, right? You have to kind of get them extended. But again, by extending their arms, you, you know, the posture is broken. So here it's hard, but once they start to do this, first of all, notice that they're starting to break their own posture, number one. And number two is their arms start to get extended. People are strong here. Once their arm starts to get out, they're no longer strong. So even at, uh, you know, uh, at, at a Udagatami grip or omoplata style attack, uh, will start to put them on defensive and now you can get you may have to string combinations together depending on the level of your opponent but again I want to me personally you, you guys know this I want to get going you know I want to submit somebody quickly and efficiently not sort of like okay let's play patty cake until one of us gets tired ma makes a mistake I want to attack I want I want to have you expose your arm your, your legs your your neck and then I go and hip heist is a really good way to do that. S is asking, how important is speed to complete the hip heist? Not important. Not necessarily. It's, it, speed is always important. Guys, I, I am pretty fast, but <laughs> you're, not, you're not first, you're last. What is that, Bobby? Ricky Bobby? Uh, I'm pretty fast, but most of my speed comes from efficiency, where I try to make lesser movement than my opponent. So you can make, if he's making major movements, you're making minor movements, you're always gonna be faster than him. But in everything that I do, a technique is number one, timing number two, speed is number three. Okay, so again, as you're working through your, you know, uh, your jiu-jitsu, trying to get better and improve, again, in my mind, guys, you don't have to listen to me. You can listen to somebody else that may say, you know, you know, go, go deadlift 800 pounds. Is that a lot? Is it possible? I don't even know what deadlift. Could be possible. But All right. It's a so lot. The, you know, if you de deadlift 800 pounds, it's going to help your jujitsu. Yeah, sure it will, but it's also going to make you focus on power. So in my mind, technique is number one. Timing, technique and timing. If you have good technique, good timing, that will be strength and speed. And Adolfo Ferranda has uh, two questions. I just did this to me. I thought he was giving me two power. high fives, but it's 10 minutes left. This gives you power. <laughs> <laughs> back, 
talk. This means move back away from the camera. This means 10 minutes. What about this? All right. He's asking, um, one, is that a row with the Fox Rash Guard Fox has on? It is. This is one of a kind. Thank you, Kristen Pone, one of my students. Uh, yeah, feast your eyes on it, guys. But guys, we had a just just it's a, this is just a side note. But we had um, I want to come back to jujitsu questions. But just so you understand, Mike actually created the logo. Thank you, Mike. It was very good. I love that the problem became. I'm I'm actually doing. A, I think it was an interview with some Australian podcast, and they were asking me, you know, how could people find you? And then I start to explain. I said you could go to Fluid BJJ, which is basically my idea of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which focuses on, yeah, I, I like to train in the water, but basically the idea is to create movement and an attacking combinations so you can kind of take what the opponent gives you. Uh, so you can go for Fluid BJJ for this. Uh, we have a, a Silver Fox BJJ YouTube channel where we do Roll with the Fox, which had its own logo. You can go to SilverFoxBJJ.com to find out information about the academy. And as I'm, as I'm explaining this, I'm, I'm listening to myself and I'm like, me personally, if I was listening to myself, my eyes would glaze over. So everything's under silverfoxbjj.com. It's a lot easier to find out. Silver Fox BJJ YouTube channel, Silver Fox BJJ Facebook, Silver Fox BJJ Instagram that Mike takes care of. So everything is a lot easier to find. But yes. <laughs> and. <laughs> And his other question was, uh, I'm wondering what are the transitions or scenarios when you decide to go with your modified bow and arrow choke grip? Uh, basically, anytime I get that grip, I go with the modified bow and arrow. That's a good question because um, I have found that, so, so let's look at it. So, um, you know what, guys, this is very important. When you're taking somebody's back, I'm not going to slap you. Don't, scare me. Don't be scared. Uh, guys, when you take somebody's back, one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they try to, so uh, say I'm going to, you know, I just shove Enrique, and I'm taking the Enrique's back. People are trying to get the hook too soon. Look how much space there is, and not only did I just lose the opportunity, but completely, it, it, I'm not going to be on top. There's a high probability you, it's a scramble. So I don't look for the hook. So I just basically, when, I'm, when, I, when I get through you know, the guy's legs, I don't look for the hook. I just control him a little bit with my knee. So now I have the bow and arrow grip, all right? Um, now, I can, I, can just, uh, I can just slide in. The problem is high level guys, see how Enrique is defending? This is what they wanna do, all right? So, so that's one. Number two is, you know, if I bring Enrique back, back in my guard, if it goes awry, this is what happens. So generally speaking, when I get the bow and arrow grip, you can see how he's, on, how he's defending. Uh, he basically gives, gives me that. It's extremely powerful, uh, again, this is probably 10 years ago, maybe longer. Yeah, probably 12 years ago. I did it to a, to a very high level guy. I just, I didn't, you know, I didn't practice it. It just came to me and I put him out accidentally. He didn't tap. Mm -hmm. Accidentally. <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> Look at episode 19, he did not tap. He thought he was tapping, but he didn't. So. Look, so as I'm passing through, as I get this, they're going to try to give it to you, but say his head slips. That's okay. I'm still on top. There is no scrambling. There is no... Um, so a short answer to your question is, generally speaking, whether he gives it to me or not, I'm taking it. It's very strong. Uh, once my hand is against the floor like this, 
it's very hard for him to slip the head. There's not a lot of, a lot of gaps. I don't have to scramble. I'm staying on top. So I would basically, when I'm in that position, I, will, I, I hit the modified bore and arrow as opposed to the traditional one. And going back to the hip heist, Jake Taylor is asking, would you pick the omoplata over the Kimura from the hip heist? Uh, yes. And, and it's, it's almost I don't choose it so much as he chooses it for me. All right? So. But it's not, you do have the Kimura. So as I'm hip heisting, I can I could take this, but this means that you kind of did a really good job. This is yeah. If he does that, it's going to happen. If he raises his hips in response to that, see that if I try to do the Kimura, it's going to be it's going to be hard for me to actually get the angle. But if I as as he's bringing me down, I basically focus on just focus on shifting my hips out. I'm, I'm going to have a better execution. So it depends what he does, how he responds. If he posts that hand on the floor, you're going to have a very easy time grabbing the kimura. If he doesn't, you're better off going with this. Most higher level guys will probably react this way as opposed to the first way. And a question from... Joshua Horwitz is, how do you improve how do you improve aggression? Meaning, being uh, being more assertive, confident when it's happening. Steroids? No, I'm just kidding. Ah, uh, get slapped before the round. I, I, you know, it's it's different for different people. It's hard to rewire your your uh, your uh, sort of personality. Uh, you know, I mean personally. When I feel pain, my first thought is to kill, you know? <laughs> so it, it depends. You have to, you know, different people have different personalities. And you, you know, it's, if, if you are sort of a person that always tries to give other people, you know, you, you, you're helping other people and you rarely kind of focus on yourself, it's, it, it's a harder journey, I think, uh, because Chances are you may be better than some people that are kind of submitting you on a regular basis. It's got nothing to do with your technique or, you know, it's just that you kind of almost let your training partners work more than they deserve to, to work. Um, I think it's sort of experience. I think it's, uh, you have to kind of try to work on that. Uh, it, to some extent, the realization that you need to do that is, is the first step. So what I would do is, is at, at that, it, it's, it's easier to shut people down or, or to sort of be aggressive, the bigger the skill gap is. So in other words, if you're really better, so much better than the other guy, finish the submission. Get into the mentality of, okay, you made a mistake, I'm going to make you pay for it. I'm not going to hurt you, but I'm going to make you pay for it. Because it's not just good for you, it's good for them. Constantly letting somebody off the hook is not a good thing. So when we flow roll, you know, like uh, for my advanced classes, usually the, the warm-up is flow roll. And I'm a big fan of that, but flow roll doesn't mean just like flopping around like a wet noodle and just letting the guy do anything. Flow roll includes getting submissions finished. It's lower intensity, lower speed than at live roll or, or competition, but it still has to be done. So maybe you, the best way is again, as you you know, as I said before, the realization is the first step. So when you flow roll with your training partners, explain to them, you know, I just heard this guy talk about it. You need to finish. Point is, if they make a mistake, the submission needs to be on, not just like, I, I know I got it. Guess what? If you kind of get to this point, for example, 
Uh, just a triangle. Yeah, I know I got it. No. Make him tap. Make him tap. You can do it in a nice way. You do it slower. You do it less intensely, but make him tap. Go to the finish. It's sort of like winning a, you know, winning a, a foot race and stopping before the finish line. Say, I know, I got this. And then let 12 of the other guys run through. No, go through the finish lines. Learn to start to finish people. You know, even if it's slow, just, just make it nice. And when I usually, when we flow roll, so if I call Enrique and triangle, flow rolling, make him tap, yeah, let him pull out, and then we keep going. You know, so, so once I finish the submission, I let him, so I open it up a little bit to see where, if I did not get to that point, where would it lead and what would I have to do? I hope that answers your question. I, by the way, that's a very, very good question. A lot of people might, you know, would benefit from that and it, 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 it actually um, plagues a lot of people, a lot of practitioners. And two more questions before we close out. Uh, first is from Paragon Growth. He's asking, any grip-breaking tips for when an opponent postures up by posting on your wrist and your and or form slash elbow area in your guard, holding your arms to the mat to posture, in other words? You could swim. Uh, believe it or not, the hardest one is when the guy actually, yeah, this is the hardest one to break. Okay? So if, you, if they post on your biceps, you can actually swim. But do you, do you see how I'm trying to sync, move my body in synchronization to, to create the opportunity? You can't just swim your arms and, yeah. Oh, crap. Okay? So... You have to, so watch what I'm, so if he posts on your biceps, you, you could do little things. See how I'm raising my hips? So my arms cannot move. By raising my hips, now my arms can move. As soon as my arm can move, one of them, I don't need both of them, I'm already opening the guard as I explained before. My leg goes on the hip, the other one is, is har why are you cringing? Is harvesting, is harvesting the arm, okay? The harder one, this is, way harder is when the guy does this. This is hard. So again, a lot of times what I do is you start to kind of clamp down on things. It actually creates, you know, almost like a wrist lock. A lot of times people people will will, uh, will let go. So you clamp down and yeah, they don't want, like really you know, like the armpit grip we talk about in arm barring, you clamp down and start to swim. It actually you, you can feel Try it with your training partner and you can start to try to walk in like, where do you feel pain? Do you start to feel pain? Do you start, oh, you feel pain. <laughs> and here we go, okay? Now, if they don't, like for example, if they posture, if they stand up, this is much harder. If that's the case, I'm looking to sort of start to get in a different angle and I, I, like try to get my, usually what happens, they, once you start to move your hips, they will go, okay? So again, this will, Actually, you have to understand that now once you stand up and you start to move your hips, that's what they're looking for. So make sure you prepare for them to immediately let go of that grip and start to, you know, attack from the guard. But start to, if you move your hips, now you're taking the risk on movement and they know that. So now, now you try to have to time them immediately releasing this grip and standing up. So as soon as you f feel that you start to move your hips and moving, you move immediately as well. Tripod sweeps, you know, uh, um, ashigurami, various entries into legs possibly because now they're going to be standing, they're going to disengage, and they're going to be standing up straight. And the last question is from David Scott. He's saying, Fox, appreciate the content. How likely do you think it is to transition from rubber guard to your armbar attack from perpendicular guard? I don't play rubber guard. And I'll tell you why. I, I believe rubber guard is a province of those that are extremely flexible. Um, 
I, this is probably maybe 20 years ago. I think I was a purple belt at the time, and I'm training with a friend of mine in, in, in the basement. Uh, uh, and I'm going to do it on, with the knee on my side. <laughs> and I did this to him. All right? And I'm start. I'm like, what is this? This is kind of interesting. No, no. And I just relaxed, and my friend drove forward. And I heard this. And I'm looking at him like, why did you punch me? Until I realized that was my own knee. Swelled up like this. Fortunately, about a week later, it got better. I didn't need surgery. And from that day on, I don't play rubber guard. So, again, I do believe that rubber guard, by definition, is the province of those extremely flexible. So I try not to play rubber guard. Um, you know, if, if I got here, I would, so if I, if, let me get under your neck. If I actually got under the, under his chin, I would stay here. I would try to harvest the others. I would stay here. There is no, no need for it for me to. Um, I wouldn't, you know, if you actually are good at it, um, there is no need for you to transition into the arm bars. Because uh, that arm that on this side is so extended, but to get to the other side, it would require such a big movement that by the time you, you probably lose it. Because anytime you put somebody in a rubber guard and the second they, they can free themselves from there, they're gone because they just don't want to be there. So in, in my sort of mind, it's, it's almost either or. All right, guys? Mike did this to me, which I think indicates that we've run out of time. Um, guys, we're getting very close to me going weekly with this. Um, I'm trying to pick a good date that uh, we start weekly. Uh, we use same time, same day. So it'll be, all, all, you know, right now we do a first Friday of every month, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Eastern Daylight Time, I don't know. 10 30 a.m. in the morning, East Coast, USA. Uh, once we go weekly. weekly, it's still gonna be every Friday, 10 30 a.m. East Coast, USA time, which seems to work kind of around the globe, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.